Joe Pesci is one of the all-time great and versatile character actors. He played Jake LaMotta's brother and manager in Raging Bull, a psychopathic Tommy DeVito in Goodfellas, and had legendary roles in Home Alone, My Cousin Vinny, and the Lethal Weapon franchise. Pesci was a welcome presence on the big screen for decades, who could successfully handle high drama and humor. But I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. But lately, we haven't heard much from the Oscar winner. While his talents have been sorely missed, here are some of the reasons Joe Pesci's been off the radar in recent years. Early retirement in 1999, when his acting career was still very much alive, Pesci announced he'd largely retire from the biz in order to pursue his first love, music. Now, while a lot of actors decide to record an album or take a role in a Broadway musical just because they can, Pesci actually has some chops. In the 60s, he was the guitarist for the band Joey D and the Starlighters, a position he vacated to a slightly better guitarist named Jimi Hendrix. In 1968, he released an album called Little Joe Sure Can Sing under the stage name of Joe Ritchie. He even introduced the two musicians who'd go on to form the Four Seasons. But then his acting career took off, and music went on the back burner for 30 years. Pesci's retirement came after the release of a bizarre LP called Vincent LaGuardia Gambini Sings Just For You. Something of a novelty project, the title is derived from the name of Pesci's My Cousin Vinny character. Guess that whole be a good lawyer thing didn't work out for old Vinny, huh? Just For Friends Every once in a while, Pesci pops out of retirement for an acting gig here and there, but there's usually a good reason for it. For example, Pesci is still very close friends with Robert De Niro. Over the course of four decades, they've starred in a number of movies together, among which are the best of both actors' stories' careers like Raging Bull, Casino, and Goodfellas, the latter of which netted Pesci the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor and what may be the shortest Oscar acceptance speech in history. Well, it's my privilege, thank you. It's his bond with De Niro that led to Pesci's only major role of note since 2000, a cameo in The Good Shepherd, the 2006 movie that was also Robert De Niro's directorial debut. Other than that, Pesci's only been seen in the 2010 brothel drama Love Ranch, which combines both boxing and the gambling scenes for which he's famed, and the 2011 Snickers commercial in which he played himself. What are you looking at? I'm not looking at it. We're not good enough for you. You look for something else? No, Losing interest. Now that we know that he's semi-retired and only comes out of hiding for a role once in a while, let's talk about why. A glance at his resume reveals very few movies after the classic Casino was released in 1995, and what he was being offered really couldn't compete with his best films. Remember Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag or Gone Fishing? Pesci's last major role was the 1998 sequel Lethal Weapon 4, which earned him a Razzie Award nomination for Worst Supporting Actor for reprising his role as the obnoxious informant Leo Getz. Those movies and his subsequent walk from Hollywood reflect a comment Pesci made to the New York Times in 1992. I love to star in movies, but I want to have good roles. It doesn't help to get starring roles in something that's no good. I mean, that will just kill you. Besides, how could any subsequent role possibly compete with what he's already done? Is this? Gains and losses Even after Pesci retired, he was still willing to take on a big role if all the factors aligned. Around 2011, he was set for a major supporting role in a film about the Gambino crime family, with John Travolta attached to star as John Gotti, and Pesci set to portray Gotti's friend and personal enforcer, Angelo Ruggiero. Ruggiero was a big guy, so Pesci dutifully gained 30 pounds for the role. Then he was reportedly dropped into a smaller part and offered a reduced salary. Surely he must have had some choice words for the execs who came to him with that. Without me, you personally, every fucking wise guy still around, I'll take a piece of your fucking ass. Pesci ultimately committed his ire to paper and filed suit against the production company, ending in an undisclosed settlement in 2013, and the Gambino movie still hasn't been filmed, with or without Pesci. But that wasn't the only legal entanglement he's found himself in. The ex-wife, the hitman, and the attorney. Pesci was married to model actress Claudio Harrow from 1988 to 1992, with whom he had a daughter. They must have remained on good terms, because Harrow's acting career started after the divorce, and of the five movies she appeared in, four were Pesci films. Pesci also stood by her side during a very bizarre legal matter. After her split from Pesci, Harrow married Hollywood stuntman Garrett Warren. But things soured in 1999, and about a year later, Warren was shot by a stranger at the front door of his home in Westlake Village 
California. It took years to figure out who shot him, but some evidence uncovered in the trunk of a car in a drug bust, directions to Warren's house and his photograph set police off and running, and they eventually figured out that Harrow had paid the assailant, a hitman, to kill her ex-husband. She later hired another hitman to finish the job. During her 2012 trial, during which she was free on $1.25 million bail, Haro brought a huge entourage to the courtroom each day, including a nun dressed in all white and her other ex-husband, Joe Pesci, dressed all in black. Harrow pled no contest and was sentenced to just over 12 years in prison. While at a preliminary hearing, a witness strongly implied that Pesci had paid for Harrow's hit against Warren. Police interviewed him and searched his property and found him absolutely unrelated to the crime. Time for a comeback? Legal lunacy aside, there's always a chance Pesci might re-emerge. In the summer of 2016, he made a surprise appearance at Spike TV's Guy's Choice Awards alongside De Niro to induct Goodfellas into the Guy Movie Hall of Fame. De Niro mentioned a long gestating movie called The Irishman. Scorsese had been trying to get off the ground for years, but remained stalled in part because he wanted it to star not just De Niro, but the elusive Pesci. That's if Joe has any, any more left in him, so... <laughs> So far, all he keeps saying is go f yourself. Finally, in early 2017, Netflix paid $105 million for the global rights to the film, and it'll supposedly be available in 2019. Could this be the start of Pesci's return? Well, maybe. Insulted me just a little bit. Just a little bit insulted me, you know? Just a little bit. It's okay, though. I'm used to it. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.